so the control of the field falls to this man. Shane Van Gisbergen, and Carnival 97 on screen. Century Batteries Chopper tracking them down all the way down Conrod Strait, just idling down there now. Next time you see them, they'll be doing the best part of 300 kilometres now. Isn't that an awesome shot of the chopper over the top of the Hino sign on the run into the chase? And remember, we've seen Shane on restarts do all kinds of things in the recent past. He's run them slow, he's run them fast, he's run them medium speed. So here we go. Pull those belts up tight, folks because we've got a sprint race to the chequered flag. Shane Van Gisbergen races away in the lead. They're trying to warm up those Dunlop tyres. Mostert in second. Brody Kostecki in third. Cam Waters in fourth. The heavyweights at the sharp end of the field. And we're boxing on for the back end of the Repco Bathurst 1000 once more. And a very, very nice restart by Van Gisbergen. He got to the left-hander at the chase. He turned it in and gassed it up. And he caught them all unaware slightly. He was able to open up a car length or car length and a half. But now the man that's probably had the best pace through the race, but with a little tyre concern, has been Mostert. We haven't seen it all day as our dead set hand-to-hand -hand battle. Here comes Waters. Great run by Cam Waters. Straight down the inside. Great authoritative, impromptu move. Bang, got it done. They would have come to their feet at Tickford on that one. I reckon that was a bit unexpected. Brody was able to typically cover down there in the battles that we've seen earlier today. But he got snipped under brakes into turn two big time. Cam Waters is on the march over the top of the hill. And this is going to light up the Ford fans. We've got Van Gisbergen, we've got Mostert, we've got Waters over the top of the hill, and we've got a 15-lap sprint race to the flag. And we've got the serial protagonists between Waters and Mostert. They find a way to get together all the time. They were teammates they crashed into each other. Now we're racing for the biggest prize in the country, the biggest race of the year. They got together here in the chase in 2019. Let's see what happens. And Mostert covers at the elbow because I knew that Cam would have a look. Shadows at the elbow. Van Gisberg and the leader. We jump on board with Waters. Third, fourth. Here comes fifth gear, building speed. They'll get to more than 80 metres a second at the bottom. Are we going to see a dive bomb under brakes? Top gear, sixth gear, over the hump. There's a crosswind at the moment from the left. He's starting to get a little bit closer. Taps the brake. Does he have a lunge? Gets closer, closer, closer. Bombs down the inside, but has to pull back out of it. Cam Waters has finished three times in a row second. He will not want to finish second again. This is a very, very big part of this race right now because the, the, the deal in terms of tyre usage and having the tyre heat up behind another car gives them a two or three lap window to make the move. And Cam Waters straight line speed is very good, Neil. He might be in a position now to lunge down the inside and put the same move on Mostert as he did to Kostecki. 14 laps remain. Can Brody fight back? Was he compromised at all in that move before with Cam by straight line speed? We asked the question of David Russell before, but he's sitting in fourth at the moment, but he's racing. But look at these guys. It's tight at the top at the moment. Van Gisbergen is just in front of Mostert, who's just in front of Waters. The sun becomes a factor on the run to the cutting at this time of day. And we've been racing for six hours and 12 minutes, and this is far from resolved. Mostert actually has found some speed. He is right there behind Van Gisbergen now. So it's not just the challenge that Waters is putting onto the back of Chaz. He's found a car length or car length and a half on Shane Van Gisbergen. Have a go at the amount of real estate they're using over the top of the hill. They are sweeping from Reed Park from McPhillamy with millimetres to the right-hand side. These are quality laps. Full commitment, top four on screen from the chopper down the hill. And in fact, it's only a couple of car lengths back to the next group. Feeney, Holdsworth, Pete Pasquale, Louds. He's in this little battle as well in eight, followed then by Fullwood, followed by Brown. Leaders at the elbow, up against the concrete wall. It's only a few foul to the right-hand side. Second, third, fourth, fifth and sixth. Back down the straight one more time. And again, evidence of Mostert looking for fresh air. Yeah, he's been challenged by water temperature all day. He's had to pull out of the slipstream and get as much cold air as he can to control that engine water temperature. Cam Waters has got good straight line speed. If he can get the thing onto the straight, he's a big chance to have a lunge that Mostert. 
What a race. Shane Van Gisbergen was the winner here in 2020. He was the runner-up in 2016 and 2019. He was on target to win in 2014 in that techno car that stalled in the pit lane. Is he going to be able to put another victory together here this afternoon? And what about Garth Tander? He will be absolutely freaking out in that garage. Is it going to be victory number five in his illustrious career? But one thing's for sure, Mostert and Waters will not have a bar of that concept. They are absolutely committed to anything but that at the moment. And Waters, if anything, is starting to look just a little bit quicker in a couple of places than Mostert. He he's got a quick car and he's going to sniff up the inside here as they get to the cutting. Not quite enough. Second gear, out of here, 85 odd kilometres an hour. Nothing available on the right-hand side of the car. They're cranked sideways like sprint cars out of there. They're committing their right foot as hard as they dare. 640 horsepower. Huge amounts of torque applied with these cars. And now it's more than 200 k over the top of the hill. Fantastic motorsport. Cam Waters is trying to position himself close enough. So this is the run that's really pivotal. Get the car to the right and then flick it off to the left through the dipper. He just lost about half a car length and that's not quite close enough. He needs to be right in behind Mostert to make that lunge at Forest Elbow. And that's the spot. There's definitely a pass to be had. Look at Garth Tander and the brains trust there. Zach Brown with Ryan Walkinshaw also. We've played high-speed snakes and ladders all day long. Six hours, 16 minutes of racing. And at the moment, the margin across the top four cars is 1.5 seconds. We've had eight safety car interventions. We've had cars off the road in bizarre places. Mud and water's been a factor. But now we've got a dry, clean, clear race to the back end, and still Van Gisbergen's got control of this at the moment. He did a personal best middle sector over the top of the hill on that lap at the back end of the race. 12 laps now remain, separating Van Gisbergen from a chequered flag. This time, Moss has just opened the margin ever so slightly over water. And there, then mate. a little well, margin well, again back to well, Brody. Looking at the last need. lap order. One, two, three, four, five, six. First six cars, fastest cars. As you can see, they have just gap the rest of the field. But this man, Waters, who continues to apply the pressure on Mostert. And will Mostert be slightly conservative about that tyre? Does it really matter? It's less length. The stint length that we're talking about is less than before. He doesn't quite have the pace at the moment. He's 0.6 of a second behind Van Gisbergen, but we're only talking about millimetres different, but in a couple of key spots, he doesn't quite have the pace at the moment, Chaz Mostert. And that's a bit of incentive here for Cam Waters. I, I think in that shortened length, the answer to the question is, I don't think the tyre will be a factor, but you just never know. And we heard before that it was the second time today that they'd had that problem of taking a chunk out of the tyre. Brody Kostecki sitting there in fourth position, back down to Forest Elbow. Shane's got it right up against the wall before he turns it in. He wants to eke out every kilometre an hour for corner exit speed to maximise the straight line run here. Brock Feeney was slightly wide through there that time. And a glimpse there of James Golding sitting in 12th position in the subway entry. That time over the top of the hill, Mostert has actually cranked out the fastest mid-sector. So he seems to be very strong over the top of the hill. But there's a couple of other spots where he just doesn't have the pace. Yeah, it's, it's weird, isn't it? There's certainly areas of the track where Shane's got a little advantage, and there's other areas where Cam Waters looks like he's the fastest. But with Mostert, fastest in sector two, Van Gisbergen, fastest in sector one, and young Brock Feeney, the 19-year-old in car 88, who's in fifth position, he's actually fastest in sector three. That was the fastest lap of the race, that lap right there. A 6.45 for Shane Van Gisbergen. That's Van Gisbergen lighting up in response. So that puts pressure back on everybody now. So the splits. Sector one belongs to Van Gisbergen. Over the top of the hill to Mostert. And the final sector to Van Gisbergen. And the best lap we've seen, a 2 minutes 6.4550. Last weekend, this guy finished ninth outright 
in a World Rally Championship round in New Zealand outside Auckland. He finished third in his class in WRC2. He lives to drive racing cars. He's won this race before. He's been the champion, and he's also on target to become the Repco Supercars champion of 2022. Is he going to be able to hang on with 11 laps to go? That's the margin, 1.2 seconds. And again, he's gone faster in the first sector than anybody out there. Yeah, that's the fastest first sector. That's actually a number that's qualifying like for sure. And especially when you were talking earlier about the compromised run out of turn one and the uh, mud and debris on the outside of the road, it's got faster and faster and faster as the sunlight has dried the exit of turn one up and those numbers now. So he, he's almost four tenths faster than Mostert in sector one. This is going to improve the lap time again. He's done the fastest second sector on this lap too. 51.7 in sector one, 33.4 in sector two, matched almost identically by Mostert. But if he gets the final sector together, this will pull that 6.4 down even further. A two minute 6.4 the last lap. We're riding with Waters, position number three. You can see the leader in the distance and the margin to second. Fourth gear, down to the final corner. Brake balance is critical down here. The second big hot hit of the front brakes. All of these guys are so accurate in their driving, hitting those targets beautifully. And that lap then was the best we've seen in the race. A two minute 6.2663 for Shane Van Gisbergen. Remarkable performance, but it makes me wonder the opposite way because this yeah, mate, yeah, mate. Yeah, to go. is the opposite of what we saw last year. Van Giesbergen in behind Mostert putting all the pressure on but Mostert drove away. Van Giesbergen is doing the same thing to Mostert this year isn't he? He's got better pace now. He does. He's got the margin out to 1.2 seconds. There's 62 kilometres or a little less now of racing to come in our edition of the Repco Bathurst 1000 in 2022. Still a long way, 10 laps, nine and a half, in fact, when they get to the top of the hill. Cam Waters just lost a little bit of ground in that last half a lap to Chaz Mostert. So here's where your favourite drivers are. Kostecki, Feeney, Holdsworth, Di Pasquale, Lowndes, Fullwood, Brown, Stanaway, then Golding, further back to Macaulay Jones, LeBron and Winterbottom. That's your top 15 off the top of the hill. And how's the millimetre placement of the cars at this end of the day? In the hands of absolute professionals, they've got these things on a string, yep. putting the cars exactly where they want to put them on this racetrack, extracting the last hundredth of a second with extraordinary technique. And if only you could bottle and share what they can do because their craft is very impressive. It certainly is, and it's been impressive all weekend in trying conditions mad wet conditions that we've had through the course of the weekend. We've had wet driver, had everything chucked at these drivers. They are the best operators of these things in the world. The best touring car drivers in the world, bar none. Mostert's responding, personal best sector one. Fastest now over the top of the hill, responding to the time that was achieved by Mostert. In fact, he took three tenths of a second out of him over the top of the hill that time. He might challenge for a new fastest lap. It looks like Cam may have lost touch here ever so slightly. 6-3 that time for Mostert, fastest car on the racetrack. Mostert was the quickest. Van Gisbergen second fastest. Waters the third fastest. Brody Kostecki the fourth fastest car. And they Nine are at go, the top buddy. of the You've tree for him. all the right reasons. And it's come on, to mate. under one Nine second. Under one second now. So we just said that Van Gisbergen was going to clear out. It's now not that at all. They're responding to each other. So Shane wants to try and break his spirit. Chaz wants to make sure that that message doesn't land. Yep. So they're responding, but they've got to extract a lot from their car, their tyres, their brakes and themselves to be able to do that. It's not an easy game to play. And right now they are playing very high stakes poker because if they make one false move, they buy the concrete because there is nowhere to go when you're at this pace, because they're at or over 100% commitment. There is no space. There is no getting out of strike. 
you get yourself into a corner here at the moment and it's basically going to be win or bin as you've heard others say today so they do not care they've got these things dancing on the edge in fact if anything he's closed the margin even further now mark coming down the hill so this is a big attack by Mostert. he's keeping the energy in the race for us how's the big slide there van gisbergen battling to get it stopped for forest elbow and that's now the fastest sector two of the race by a mile, Mostert. He's three tenths faster across the top than what Van Gisbergen was. Each responds to the other. Fastest first sector for Van Gisbergen. A response from Mostert. A 33 3 over the top of the hill is running with him. Does the battle that included three now become two? Because Waters has drifted ever so slightly. Van Gisbergen's got the fastest lap of the race, a 2 minute 6.2. And that last lap for Mostert was his best in the race. It was only one tenth of a second slower on a 6,213 metre racetrack. Extraordinary stuff. Can you believe that pace between the two of them? And on that lap, there's eight one hundredths of a second between Van Gisbergen and Mostert. They are trading punches. These guys are. Oh, oh no, a massive slide. Mostert, he almost gave it away. When you spin to the infield of the grass, if you make that grass, you are in the fence hard. And he gathered it up. He's got extraordinary car control, but he had to use every little bit of it then because he was too hungry over the exit curve and he made the water. Watch this. That's the mud, and oh my God, that is so close to going straight across the road into the fence. There you go, there's Zach and Ryan. Same reaction as Neil and I had in the commentary box. I thought he was in the fence. And he may have thought that too for what, just one moment there. And you heard me say only a few moments ago, they've got nothing left. So if you arrive at one of those corners a K too quick, ask too much of those tyres, crack that throttle too early, that's the end game. He missed the apex slightly, it ran him high on the kerb, and that cost him about two to three tenths of a second. So what was 1.1 seconds at that time quickly became 1.3. And you know what? Van Gisbergen, because he's such got such a, a high racing IQ and so perceptive in the car, he would have looked in the mirror and seen Mostert have that monster moment. He would have. He would have gone, oh, wow, thank you. That's half a second. That's a give me an unforced error. But it's not really an unforced error because it is a forced error based on the pace. The reason that you make a little mistake like that is because you are pressing on so hard. Again on this lap, four tenths of a second across the top of the hill between Van Gisbergen and Mostert. Next time through, it is seven laps to go in the great race. That's Shane Van Gisbergen in the Red Bull car. In the mobile Optus car is Chaz Mostert. In the monster car just behind is Cam Waters. The shot into the final corner bathed in sunshine. What a great image. And that is 1.2 seconds, that gap that you can see on screen. And it's almost the same margin then back to Cam Waters. Holden's last Bathurst. The final time that the famous red line will be at Bathurst. And between these two men, they both yeah, made the factory man, teams. Factory team in Red Bull Ampole Racing. Previously, WAU was the Holden Racing Team. They're both vying for the final supremacy, the final time that we'll see the great Holden brand at this famous racetrack. Now he's trying to reel him back in. Il Rue dropping those couple of tents, but he's got a quick car, Chaz Mostert. He's shown in the mid-stint of the race, and you can hear those tyres chirping in the background then that he had a car that was quicker than anybody else out there. There hasn't been this pressure on Van Gisbergen at any other point in the day than there is now. Wait for the shot. Isn't that absolutely glorious? The arrive and depart over the top of the hill. Unbelievable speed. So with the pressure on now, uh, his tyres at the extreme edge as well, Van Gisbergen. 1.2 seconds is the gap once more. So Mostert, in some fresh air, has been able to just pull that gap back ever so slightly. He has, and that's a little spot there where Shane's stability is not quite good enough. And again, three and a half tenths faster across the top of the hill that time for Mostert versus Van Gisbergen. That little piece of the road where he goes over the rise at the right-hander before Forest Elbow, the car's unstable and he has to grab it. It slides and tries to lock the rear wheels. He's trying to get back to second gear. 
and contain the wheel spin off the corner. He's able to do that nicely on the exit, but the entry is pretty wild. On the last lap, the speed of the cars was in positional order. So Van Gisbergen was the quickest from Mostert and Waters. We'll get a check on that for you once more, and we'll check on these margins. 1.1 seconds at the last count. 1.2 now for Van Gisbergen and Mostert. And another 1.8 back then to Cam Waters. The fastest car on that lap was Chaz Mostert, and he is exploiting the limits of turn one. He's making me nervous there. The second fastest car was Van Gisberg, and the third fastest car was Waters. You know what the margin was between the two laps? 18 ten thousandths of a second. Absolutely nothing in it. Neither of them have got anything left at the moment. This is a play for the biggest motor race of the year. They've slightly dropped Waters further back now. He's 2.1 adrift from Mostert. Up to the cutting. Mostert had a pretty big slide there on the last lap. I think you heard the tyres protest last time. He had a big slide, he battled to gather it up. He lost a little bit of ground in comparison to Shane, so he was more measured that time. Part of the thing right now is you're in this amazing rhythm. You've got the car on a string, you're flowing it, you're sliding it, you're trying to keep it between these big barriers and walls. And as you're doing it, you're driving it right to the last millimetre of room on the racetrack. But you're doing it in a way where you, you offer it up just like there and you're trying also at the same time to not hurt the tyre too much because you know that in the closing five laps any little advantage over the car in front is going to serve you well. So I think they're talking about radio contact. Yeah, because remember Garth said earlier that the radios weren't good in this car, so I think he's asking for all cars to be just on mountain straight. That margin is inside a second again now, Mark. There is nothing in this. Shane makes the tiniest mistake here. As you were explaining vividly there a moment ago, they are maxed out everywhere. They're at one with their cars, and they are squeezing every last drop of performance and lap speed out of these vehicles. It's 0.94 of a second. They cannot afford to make one little slip, and the margin between them in lap speed on the last lap was crazy tight again. It was a 2 minute 6.67 for Mostert. Yeah, keep coming. Two minutes, 6.9 for Van Gisbergen. Andrew Edwards on the radio. Jamie Wincup in the background, team owner. This is the ultimate pressure in Australian motorsport. The ultimate prize. This is a race that changes people's lives. We've seen some of the greatest drivers at this venue apply their trade. Brock. Moffat, Johnson, Richards, Perkins, Winker. And when you think about those people and you look at what's going on right now, you've got to put Van Gisberg and Mostert and Waters and Co. in that same bundle of superstars that have driven these cars so superbly today, but all weekend. This is a classic Bathurst 1000. 2.2 second margin now, Mostert back to Waters. So Cam's battling to be able to maintain the pace at the moment. Maybe the balance has gone away ever so slightly. And just at the top of the mountain on this lap, that margin first to second went out by a whopping tenth of a second. That's how tight it is over the top. There they are, the yeah, top two. Keep it up. Andrew Edwards on the radio, encouraging Van Gisbergen, keep it up. Perfect. They are positioning the cars on the apron on the run through the chase. And look where they turn them in from, right up against that white line. They are absolutely nailing it out there at the moment. And there's Waters in third position. Next time through, it's going to be four laps to go. See the difference in the line that they take there at Murray's Corner, and they're doing it pretty much everywhere. Chains running the car deeper into the braking area and turning harder at the end of the stop. So he turns the, the car with more steering lock and more aggressively at the end of the braking area. Okay, what Chaz does is he releases the brake slightly and, and turns the car at the corner slightly earlier and flows the car at the corner. 
He's doing it in four or five different areas, and that was really evident at the final corner in terms of their approach. Ryan Walkinshaw in the Walkinshaw Andretti United garage. He was sitting there with Zach Brown before, and they dare not blink. Their man is 0.9 of a second behind the race leader at the moment. Last time out in New Zealand, Shane Van Gisbergen put together back-to-back -back victories in two of the three races. He took home, Mark, his third Jason Richards Memorial Trophy. He went back to New Zealand last weekend and spent a weekend sideways successfully in a rally car. And now he's potentially within sight of another Bathurst 1000 victory. He's three and a half laps away from that prospect. He did it in 2020. He's been a runner-up before. He's felt the pain here as well. And this is his 16th attempt at the Bathurst 1000. And it's not done yet. They are completely in the zone. There was some brake locking. He lost a little bit of ground there, so he was right at the grip edge limit. And that immediately pulled four tenths of a second out of the Van Gisbergen lead. It's down now to 0.6 of a second. It illustrates what I was talking about, that they are maxed out. There's nothing left. They're right on the edge of making mistakes. And if either one blinks, the other will pounce. And this is what I was saying. What he's doing is he's breaking it deeper into the corner and turning it later. You can see Chaz, he turns it at the corner earlier and keeps the flow. Now, this is the example. Watch how late and deep he turns it. And he just missed the turn-in point. He locked the inside wheel and ran wide. And you can hear it in the background. Ryan understands that this is an opportunity. It's now three quarters of a second. Great intensity in the motor race. Three laps remaining. Van Gisbergen into turn one. Critically negotiating that apex and the mud on the outside. 0.7 of a second is the margin. Waters has dropped off even further. Three laps to go for Shane Van Gisbergen. Could this be his 73rd career victory? Could this be the 100th podium for Garth Tander in his career? Garth Tander has had 56 wins to this point. It might be number 57. They go from the shade back into the bright light when they approach the cutting right there. They pop out into the sunlight. For Tanda, this may be Bathurst victory number five. Dare he dream that thought. Unbelievable intensity over the top of the hill. Two and a half laps remain. Fastest lap belongs to Shane Van Gisbergen. It's back out again to 1.3 seconds. They are pulling all of the stops out to achieve greatness at the mountain here at the moment. Van Gisbergen, Mostert, Waters, Kostecki, and Brody's now 8.4 seconds off the lead and he's dropped 4.7 to cam he just does not have the firepower the smallest mistake by van gisbergen down here this is where the mistake was last lap and that's where he's unstable you can just see him correct it again and that little bit of instability was the thing that caused the mistake last time but he's responded yeah, he's massively. Pulled a gap there, so he's pulled a gap and in the first sector he was six tenths of a second faster than Chaz Mostert. It must have been a little mistake from Chaz, Chaz somewhere yep. because that's opened up. That's the first time we've seen a chunk of that nature in the recent past. There's the margin from the chopper in the braking area at the bottom of the chase. Is he going to be able to claw it back? This time through, it is two laps to go for Shane Van Gisbergen. It's been a huge month for Van Gisbergen and the Van Gisbergen family. Can the guy that won it last year overcome a margin of 1.3 seconds to the Flying Kiwi, who is the championship leader? He comes to the event with a 525-point lead, Van Gisbergen, and have a look where he had the car parked on the top of the kerb at the exit there of Turn 1. Nothing left. Two to go. Clear blue skies over the top of the mountain, and they're fighting for the grand prize. And the New Zealand racing gods have shone brightly as Garth Tander nervously watches on. But those New Zealand racing gods at Pukekohe, he went from eighth in the final race to win on home soil in front of a very parochial and proud New Zealand crowd for the final Pukekohe race at the, at the previous race meeting. And they're shining brightly again and on him today. That gaps out to 1.5 seconds now. And he is doing an absolutely superb job. He's going to break the record for the number of wins in a season.
and he's going to be able to win for the final time for Holden at this prestigious event. Came here with 18 victories, equaling what Scott McLaughlin achieved. Oh, There's oh, a record oh, in a oh, season. He's not, made another mistake there. This is the weak spot for him at Forest Elbow. It's that point that Mark made about that wide turn in line there. And he's getting a lot of inside front locking, so he's lost margin again. It's down to point nine of a second. He cannot afford another of those mistakes. The two garages, the respective bunkers. This time through, it's going to be one lap to go for Van Gisbergen into Murray's corner for the second last time now. 0.8 of a second, Mostert is throwing everything at this. Look at the way it's wriggling under brakes. It is absolutely maximum game on attack there for Chaz Mostert. We've got one lap to go. The crowd is loving it. What a show, what a day. What a wild ride at Mount Panorama. Last lap, buddy, last lap. Shane Van Gisbergen might do something special here this afternoon. He's 33 years of age. He made his debut in V8 supercar racing back at Ora Park in 2007. And he has been supreme for most of the recent years. His balance, his fight, his passion for the sport is unrivaled. He has done an unbelievable job today under pressure over the top of the hill now for the last time. He's got it back out again, Mark, to 1.3 seconds. Gee, he's strong in that first sector as he negotiates the run to the cutting. Listen to that crowd. And how cool is it to have the crowd back with us? Holden fans rejoicing at the top of the mountain as two of their hard charges lead the great race. Out the other side of the dipper now for the final time. There are Marshall is supporting, but does he pull it up well here at Forest Elbow? He's got to be ultra conservative. He's made mistakes there in the recent past. He gets through there cleanly. The margin is just 0.9 of a second. Down Conrod straight now for the last time. Fourth gear, fifth gear and sixth gear. There was a question mark over the gearbox in this car earlier in the day. No such problem right now. Into the braking area for the last time. And the thing just looked a tiny bit unstable when he first grabbed the brake. The margin is exactly one second through that muddy section of the racetrack for the very final time. And what a day. He's overcome a penalty. Competitor crashes, weather, rain and mud. It's farewell hold and hold. by Shane Van Gisbergen and Garth Tander for the final time for Holden. Jamie Winkup rejoicing. Garth Tander and the rest of the team absolutely so enthusiastic. The celebrations for Van Gisbergen. What a day for Holden fans. 73rd career, career victory for Shane Van Gisbergen. 57th for Garth Tander. That's 100 career podiums for Tander and the second Bathurst 1000 victory for Shane Van Gisbergen. Red Bull have done it again. What a day. And that takes Triple Eight to victory number nine. And actually climbing over the top now of the old Holden Racing Team and Walkinshaw Andretti United for team victories. So a big, big run at the end. And that margin, after six hours, 43 minutes, was 1.09 seconds between first and second. What an outstanding drive today from Van Gisbergen and Tander. Hearty congratulations to Mostert and Coulthard. And in third place today, Waters and Moffat, a beautiful drive to get on the podium, Rihanna. Massive congratulations happening down.